All right, folks, on December 23rd of this year, Daniel Noboa will step up as Ecuador's president, replacing Guillermo Lasso, whose presidency is limping to the finish line. Lasso was once a beacon of hope for Ecuadorians, but he's nosedived to lower approval ratings than Nicolas Maduro. And considering Maduro caused the worst humanitarian crisis in the America since the Spanish frickin' conquest, that's really saying something. Let's dissect the missteps that took Lasso from a symbol of change to a byword for failure in record time. First, ideologically, Lasso had the right ideas. Especially economically, his policies aimed at liberalizing the market were textbook material for economic revival. But when he tried to remove fuel subsidies, and amazing, yet very controversial policy move, he slammed into the great wall of political reality. You can't just pull the rug out from under people who have become dependent on the subsidy, especially not Ecuador's indigenous population who were infuriated by the move and incited nationwide protests that ground the economy to a halt. Lasso's economic moves were solid, but politically, he came into the National Assembly with less than 10% of the votes, and instead of growing his small coalition, he just kept losing votes through a lack of political intelligence. Second. There is the law and order situation that has destroyed Ecuador's reputation across the globe. Under Lasso, streets became more dangerous than ever with crime statistics that made citizens long for the good old days. Drug cartels ran wild, turning cities into their personal battlegrounds, and Lasso's government was a step behind every single step of the way. The public sense of security disintegrated, and with it, any confidence in their government's ability to protect them. Quite frankly, Lasso lacked the tenacity and toughness to tamp down on crime. But perhaps the most egregious of Lasso's missteps was the corruption that seemed to fester right under his nose. While corruption has stained every single Ecuadorian presidency, and will likely continue to do this for a while, when credible allegations emerged that Lasso's brother-in-law was the ringleader of the largest corruption cartel in the country, it wasn't just a scandal, it was a complete betrayal of public trust. Audios leaked, suggesting Lasso might have even known about it, and when it's your brother-in-law and personal homie, that's not a good look for any president. It's not just about being clean, it's about being above suspicion. So in conclusion, Guillermo Lasso's term as president of Ecuador is a case study in good intentions getting lost in poor execution and political naivete. As we watch Lasso's exit and Noboa's entrance, the people of Ecuador are hoping for more than just promises. They need a leader who understands that good ideas must be matched with savvy political strategy and negotiation. Otherwise, you're just another well-meaning leader who couldn't deliver.